Hello everybody and welcome to the Hearthstone Singapore Major. My name is TJ and joining me for the first match is going to be Lothar. Lothar, how are you doing today, man? I'm good. I'm good. First time in uh, Singapore, so pretty excited to be here and to see the meta game as well. Because, you know, when I I usually cast European and um, North American matches mm -hmm. and there's, there's like the meta game kind of, you know, figured out. Yeah. But I w when I watch those games being played out in Asia, there's always something really new and exciting. Yeah. So I'm really hyped to be here yeah. and cast with you. They're not afraid to innovate. And wow. uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're here at the Bunk Hostel <laughs> in Singapore, where over 100 of the best Hearthstone players from across the Asia Pacific region have gathered to compete for their share of a $5,000 prize pool, as well as 43 Hearthstone Championship Tour points. It's the, the biggest major, the biggest open that has happened on Southeast Asia soil. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And we have passionate gamers, uh, even just right outside of our of our casting door here and, and throughout the whole hostel. So it's a, it's a really cool experience. Yeah, it's 11 countries actually represented. Yeah. I mean, for the first day, mm -hmm. right? In the second day, we have only 10 countries remaining because yeah. one of the Australian players was kicked out. And he's like this sole, you know, <laughs> sole, <laughs> sole yeah. player here. And uh, yeah. that event, unfortunately, he didn't advance the day two. But yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we actually uh, had um, the preliminary rounds, which started uh, yesterday. And uh, we made it to uh, the top 64 players. So you can actually see the, uh, the winner's bracket here. Yeah. Um, with uh, so some pretty known players. We can see Waning Moon there, uh, Pew Pew Your Face. Both of those players are popular uh, Southeast Asia uh, players. We have Zatkill, mm -hmm. uh, which I know as well uh, from, from Ladder. And uh, the most importantly, those players, as I said, are split into two brackets, winner's mm -hmm. bracket and loser's bracket. 32 will be in the winner's bracket, which is the shorter uh, way to get into the final because when you're knocked down to the lower bracket, then you not only you, you don't you can't lose anymore, yeah. but also you have to win more matches to get into the grand final. So the later you go to the losers bracket, of course, the better. Hopefully for some, you will not get that uh, get yeah. to that point at all, right? Yeah. So and uh, you can see a couple more known players here: Kranich uh, from Team Binatas, the Korean player, handsome guy as well. Uh, the runner-up for the uh, 2016 APAC Winner Championship. Uh, Sound Stormy, who's a well-known Singaporean player, and uh, Chalk, who's one of the yeah. uh, the, the most uh, famous uh, Filipino players, or the, one of the fan favorites uh, from the Philippines. And uh, he will be in the first match as well. Exactly, yeah. And uh, now we're taking a look at the lower bracket here. These are the players that, uh, in the preliminary stages yesterday, actually dropped a game. Uh, so uh, they're, they're fighting for their lives here. Yeah, they finally got the lives, and uh, as you can see, there's a lot of places to be filled up. And the round of uh, 32B, which is um, basically after the next one, yeah. uh, you will have the names that are going from the winner's bracket to the loser's bracket because 50% of them will be knocked down, right? So yeah. you can also see some um, familiar faces here, Koronika, an, an example, mm -hmm. uh, being in the loser's bracket uh, right now and hoping to get you know some redemption. Yeah, yeah. Koroniko, a popular streamer too on Twitch. Uh, plays for Mobcast now, um, and one of the most popular players from the Japanese region. At, at least uh, that's known in, in the Western scene. So uh, again, like we said, that's the the lower bracket. So those players uh, will have to fight all the way through if they want to make it. But it's worth it. It is worth it. It is worth it. That is correct. And now we can see the first match will be played between Chalk and Shiny Pants. And uh, interesting fact about Ch Shiny Pants is his first offline event, but he is known as a ladder player for a long time, since beta phase, actually. Yeah. So uh, no one knew he actually exists until he popped, uh, popped out right now yeah. on this tournament. So it's yeah. really cool to see him um, in this uh, at this event. And we can talk about the classes. So Chalked. Chalk uh, brought a Warlock, Druid, Paladin, and a Warrior. Warrior got banned. For Shiny Pants, the ban was a Druid, and uh, he is still having a Paladin, Warlock, and a Warrior. So, hmm, quite, I would say the same matchups, basically, but different bans. Yeah, exactly. I mean, matchups. We yeah. don't know yet, right? The decks might be quite different uh, when it comes to those players, so I'm um, quite curious if that's maybe a Murloc Paladin, maybe it's Secret Paladin, yeah. maybe it's Midrange Paladin, who knows? Might be something, um, you know, interesting. And it could be uh, that Chalk might be playing a, a more control style of decks, uh, that's why he wanted to ban the Druid away, yep. uh, whereas Shiny Pants is playing the, you know, more, I don't want to say aggressive, more board control style, which Warrior does really well against, both Control and Patron does well against Secret Paladin, Zoo Warlock. Uh, so that could be a possibility that you know their their decks are the same classes, 
but they differ in you know the archetype of the deck, yeah. and that's why their bands differ. So yesterday we had also two hundred players, almost yeah. two hundred players, yeah. right? Um, what was happening? Can you tell me something? Yeah, so uh, yesterday we had the preliminary rounds which actually happened at a local gaming center here called Enzo Games uh, in Singapore. Really cool place. And uh, uh, we narrowed it down to 64 players. And we actually had our very own Pather who actually got a chance to stop by the gaming center and check in with some of the players and see the initial round. So uh, l let's take a look at what she learned at the gaming center yesterday during the preliminaries. Greetings, welcome to day one of the Hearthstone Singapore Majors. This event is the first of its kind in the Southeast Asia region. There are 200 players from 10 different countries competing here today. 60 of them flew in just for this tournament. So right now they are doing the preliminaries and the top 64 players will be moving on to the main event. There are a couple of notable players in this tournament. Right behind me is Kranich. Kranich is a BlizzCon veteran. He is the only player to represent in both BlizzCons. We also have Handsome Guy who plays second in the 2016 Asia Pacific Winter Championships. And here's one of my favorites. Straight from Vietnam in the white shirt is Nelio, the 2015 Southeast Asia champion. We also have players from Japan. This is Koroneko. He is one of Japan's top players. Uh, my name is Isaac Tiri, My name is Moon, I'm from the Philippines. Uh, I'm from Singapore. We are from South Korea. Nilio from Vietnam. Tommy from Massage in Singapore. I'm Grace. Uh, I'm from the Philippines, but I live in Singapore. I'm very excited to play. This is my first uh, major tournament. It's very confident. More comfortable for us since it's our home ground. I feel very excited to be here to compete with uh, some of the best players in the world. Very excited, very pumped. We're just going to have fun. Yeah. To win everything. We just really feel good before this tournament. We are here to And I had a chance to stop by yesterday as well, and what a cool place it was. It, it was pretty much just a giant room filled with nerds playing Hearthstone. That sounds lovely. It I mean, you can see on their faces, like, the Asian scene is quite different from European and Nor yeah. um, North American scene that I know, because the players are, m like, more friendly. Yeah. They're bonding with each other, like, you know, a lot more. Yeah. Than the They're Asian having play. fun! Yeah, actually. What? They have yeah. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I just play Hearthstone competitively. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a, a pretty cool experience seeing that. And like we said, uh, yesterday were the preliminary matches, so we, we did narrow it down uh, to 64. So uh, across today and tomorrow, we'll be narrowing it down. We're playing through the round of 32 winner's bracket, the round of 2 third loser's bracket. And uh, then, of course, at the end of it all, we'll have, we'll have that champion. But uh, we like I said, we are here at the Bunk Hostel, which is a really cool place. And uh, we actually have Pathra standing by downstairs in the player area. So let's send it over to her the lobby of Bunk Hostel. And as you can see, there is a lot going on around here right now. Right behind me are the 32 players still in this competition. And as you can see, they are having a blast on their gadgets with the Razor Blade Stealth and the Microsoft Surfaces. On my right side over here, we have the main game. And it is currently between Shiny P and Chalk. And they are really focused in their game, so I'm not going to bother them anymore. I'm going to throw their game back to you guys. Shiny P. Shiny P. That's, okay. that's what he goes by on the streets. Uh, <laughs> Shiny P. Well, yeah. you don't want to show your pants off. <laughs> yeah, that, that is correct. But yeah, Chuck versus Shiny Pants, that's going to be the first matchup of the day. And we gave them a little bit of an introduction earlier. And uh, Chalk, of course, a player from the Philippines. Uh, he actually qualified for the 2014 uh, America's Qualifier for the 2014 World Championship, mm -hmm. uh, along with his fellow countryman, Staz. Uh, but they weren't able to get visas in time to travel, so they actually got replaced uh, in, that, in that tournament. So they, they actually could have had a chance for glory as early as 2014, but, but 
couldn't quite make it there. That's a pain to hear, always. In every single esports I know, there's yeah. always a problem with the visa for some players. Yeah. It's really tough to like you know to handle for some regions. Mm -hmm. So it's always sad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but about Shiny Pants, as we said, uh, he's new to the offline scene, yeah. but he is known in the latter scene. So hopefully he can make a um, you know just a long run here at the SE Major in yeah. Singapore. Yeah, and uh, Shiny Pants, uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier. He had a, in one of the very first, one of the inaugural seasons. I think it was in beta even. He had a top three legend finish. So long ago. So both these players have been around the Hearthstone scene for a long time. But enough talking. Let's sling some cards, Lothar. Anything can happen. Man. Anything can happen. <laughs> Anything can happen. Literally, Chalk is bringing that card to the tournament. So it's a really cool... Like, I love this deck. Yeah. So so different from every other Paladin that I, I had an occasion to play. Because, mm. you know, usually don't you don't run Doomsayers, you don't run double lay on hands. There was a moment in the meta game yeah. when it was really slow that you run double of those. But this this serves a purpose in this deck, so it's a combo deck. You just want to kill your opponent with one or two waves of the Murlox, and basically that's it. Yep. The rest of the card supports that idea. And on the other hand, we have Shiny Pants, who brought, I would say, a Patron Warrior. I mean, you have two really staple cards in that deck, which yep. is Unstable Goal and Defrauding Berserker. So most likely there will be a Patron here as well, which is a known deck for a long time. Probably nothing to add here. Right? Yep, yep. Indeed, and uh, we, we sort of mentioned it earlier that judging by Chalk's ban strategy, uh, he did ban the Druid, so that you know gave us the sort of hint that he was playing more control style decks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he, has, he has a Warlock also, so this might give us a hint that maybe uh, it's a, a, a control style like Reno or Handlock. So uh, let's get into game though. So what, what do you think of this matchup, uh, Lothar, the, the Patron Warrior versus the Murloc Paladin? It's, um, well, you think about the, the ways of how how Chuck will uh, remove the minions. He has a lot of a lot of tools, right? Yeah. He has a quality, he has consecration, he has doomsayers. So he can preemptively play doomsayer on a board to just avoid a turn six emperor, an example, or just a, you know a patron drop. Uh, but the problem is, if shiny pants plays more tempo based patron, then it would be more problematic for Chuck. And you, as you can see, he is running for the berserkers and pile the shredders. Yeah. We also saw that he is running a Dr. Boomer as his deck as well. So there are threats that can just, you know, be, be threatening the board on its own. Yeah. So this might be a problem for Chalk. So it all depends on how uh, Shiny Pants will, ho how much aggressiveness he will put on board. Yeah. Yeah, you can just, you know, pressure the Murloc Pattern out of the game. And I think Chalk realizes this. And this is why he just goes in and plops down the Doomsayer on turn two. He realizes that he can't really let the patron. Uh, warrior get going because a frothing berserker on turn three and mm -hmm, then a death mm -hmm. spider or a powder shredder on turn four those things can snowball out of control exactly and uh, this stops that in its tracks so no frothing berserker on turn three which would, which would have been perfect right mm -hmm. uh quite interesting to play the weapon right now when he has the access to the death spider on yeah. turn four, right it all depends now what will be the plan for for chalk for next turn because he most likely will not play anything into a Okay, Warax, right? So yeah. no Peacekeeper, uh, no loot, loot Hoarder, you don't want to do that probably, so you just, um, I don't know, maybe. Well, Loot Hoarder is okay, actually. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Loot Hoarder is okay. Also, uh, I really it's don't like mind Blue Go Warrior, <laughs> just because you want your Murlocs to die anyway, and just getting out the swings of the de or the Fire Warax means mm -hmm. that the Fire mm -hmm. isn't going to be there to take out, you know, maybe even more threatening creatures like the Murloc War Leader or the Old Murkai when they come out inevitably, so. That's a good point. But yeah, but Loot Hoarder gives him hidden the draws, which yep. might be Very true. more crucial right now. For Shiny Pants, seems like an easy turn. No. Just kill the Loot Hoarder, drop the Paltashler, because that's the most um, fitting minion when it comes to mana curve, right? And probably want to save the 5 mana for Threatening Berserker and Slam, or even just Hero Power. Because at the same time, uh, Warrior can just outlast the Paladin. Yeah. If he will just be you know defensive enough with the hero powers and it also depends if he has shield blocks in his hand maybe yeah. a shield made and sometimes it's just like played like a one-off yeah. uh, in the patron deck definitely doesn't have the same access to uh the resources uh as control warrior when it comes to survive survivability oh my god too too harsh of a word i mean <laughs> you know just the means of survival yeah. for the warrior yep will be less um less impactful than control warrior circumlocution uh, what you just practiced there, but um, this uh, this you, you mentioned how sometimes you can 
outlast what now? the Paladin player. Mm -hmm. It's really hard as a patron. It's possible, and a lot of times it involves big Armorsmith turns, but it's really hard. Because over the course of two, anything can happen. Smurlock Paladins can put out... 70? You know, yeah, uh, uh, upwards of, of 70 damage. So, you know, wor like worst case scenario, um, you know, the first one I believe does, was it 22 damage? Uh, somewhere around there. Well, it depends what kind of or thing 21. Like, right? Let's yeah. say there was um, the maximum output, right? So two war leaders and one two... Murkai. One more guy, two blue gills. So two blue gills are six attack, six attack each. Mm -hmm. So that's twelve damage. Then you have old Murkai, which is six damage on its own, and then plus one for each murder, which is five. So eleven, uh, eleven, uh, seventeen, twenty-three. Okay, twenty-three. Yeah. So I was a, a little bit off, but uh, then after that, there's sort of a, a little bit of variance involved because you can get, uh, you know, all of your war leaders and no Murkai mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. things have died. So. Um, uh, sometimes you can do as little as like 30, but you can do as much as Actually, like you are correct. 22, because the Murkai doesn't count himself. Doesn't count itself. Yep. Yeah. I've learned that many times in trying to do Murloc Paladin math. Now, a cool interaction could have been seen because um, the Truce of the Champion heals himself, right? Yeah. And because of that, he, he was dealt one additional damage because the, the bot had, had a trigger whenever someone is being healed, then that one damage is being dealt. Like an juggle, but for healing, which is, you know, kind of funny. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. He actually could have played a hero power and then potentially had enough mana <laughs> if the Shadow Boxer had killed the hero power to play the Solemn Vigil. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. I'm blown away. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Uh, so here's something interesting. Uh, Shiny Pants actually has an Elise Star Seeker in what we have sort of determined is a patron warrior, mm -hmm. but we haven't seen patrons. Yeah, and we didn't see. Well, we did, did saw one on unsta unstable goal. We saw right? an unstable goal. We and an inner rage. Yep. So it's still it's, pa it's patrons, patron, right? Yeah. But at the same time, Frozen Berserk could have been played in a control warrior as well. Yeah. And the same goes for the Elise. Yeah. So I, I've actually seen this on ladder a few times, the Elite Star Seeker in Patron. And, and my theory is that it just adds a win condition in a matchup where, in a really bad matchup. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. One of those being like Control Priest. If you can't develop Patrons early on against Control Priest, a lot of times you fall into a situation where you just don't have a win condition because they'll remove your Patrons whenever you play them. Uh, it's the same with Arena uh, Warlocks or you know Handlocks in general. A lot of times, mm -hmm. if you can't play Patrons early before they have a chance to draw into the AoEs, you pretty much have no win condition. Uh, so maybe at least Star Seekers put into a Patron Warrior to just give yourself a win condition in matchups where you otherwise wouldn't have one. Yeah, that's true. That's uh, entirely correct. And especially against Control Warriors, an example, when he has just so much removal. Yeah. Um, there's like two brawls. Currently, everyone is almost sporting two brawls. There's two executes, you know, there's the, we the, the other weapons. So you want to change those low impact cards like Ghoul, like Inner Rage, like Whirlwind mm -hmm. into something that will be actually useful. Yeah. Yeah, well, Dr. Boom is playing on the board, but Chalk, it, yeah, he's so relaxed right now. He just <laughs> knows that he has a million ways to deal with this Dr. Boom. He's got a quality with Wild Pyromancer if he wants to remove the whole board and maybe deny some draws from the Acolyte of Pain. Uh, he's got Outdoor Peacekeeper if he wants to just, you know, hold on to the, mm -hmm, that combination mm -hmm. for a little bit longer, so plenty of ways to deal with this Dr. Boom. I would say that you have to remove the minions right now because your opponent, even with only four attack on board, will still pressure you enough because he'll just add a weapon on top of that. Yeah. And then you'll have to do something about the board anyway, right? So um, I would say that probably a quality and consecration is the correct move. He goes for the Peacekeeper instead. Interesting. And the Doomsayer. So that's four damage on board and basically almost any kind of removal adds up to the seven health. Yeah. Right? Oh, look, there's the, uh, the crowd there. Oh, uh, and they're right game. outside the castle <laughs> with their uh, Twitch emotes, watching some Hearthstone. A lot of those are players that are either going to play later today or were eliminated in the preliminaries. But uh, good to see a lot of passionate Hearthstone fans in, uh, in the Southeast Asia region coming out to, to watch and to play some Hearthstone. That was a lot of players, actually. Yes, it is. A lot of. Yeah. And as I said, everyone is so friendly. Yeah. Nice and it is that. very hot in Singapore. It is. I don't know if you've noticed it, Lothar. I did notice it yesterday already. Okay. Uh, it's like um, for the Europeans using Celsius, it's around 30 
32, 34 degrees, mm -hmm. and it's humid as hell. Yeah. Yeah. How much is that in Fahrenheit? Uh, about 95 to 96. Wow. Very hot. Sounds like a lot. It is, yeah. It's a very high number. <laughs> All right, well. The weapon will finish off the Doomseer, and the board is saved. Yeah. Miracles! He didn't have to expend too many resources to take out this Doomseer. I mean, it, sometimes it doesn't feel that great to, to hold on to four damage on the board, but this four damage actually has much more implications than just the damage. There's the, the draw from the Acolyte of Pain, there's the damage from the Boom Bot, so... <laughs> Some of those emotes aren't actually Twitch emotes. They're just some of the players that we made into <laughs> Twitch emotes. That was Chalk, actually. That was a Chalk emote oh, yeah. that you just saw. He's a two in two places at the same time. Yeah. So what to do against this <laughs> board? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I was scared for a second. It's <laughs> like, you know, you visit the, the house um, the house of horrors. Yeah. And it's like something popping out yeah. in the corridor. And like, ah! The Hearthstone House of Horrors chalk pops out at you. <laughs> well, you need to do something about this board, right? Yeah. It's four damage, it's piling on. The Acolyte of the Fane is kind of like, you don't want to give your opponent the draws. Yeah. And you don't have means to heal yourself, apart from the hi uh, heal bot. But now, then it gets killed by the board. Oh, it's really a tough, tough situation for Chalk and Iron right now. Yeah. The thing is, uh, you know, Chalk sort of is on this plan that he's saying, I'm not threatened by this board. So, you know, I like the line of play that he went with there, saying, you know, I'm going to stick with, with this line of play. Uh, I'm going to let you be the one who decides when this board is going to go and trying to hold on as long as possible. He realizes that if you use your board clears too early in this matchup, patrons are going to dominate you. And he doesn't have the second equality. So Chalk wants to make sure that he's going to have the board removal for those patrons. So definitely like this line of play. Okay, good point. But at the same time, you will run out of, out of answers. You at will. Some point. Yes, you will. And eventually, those—it's four damage on the board. But eventually, that four damage is gonna is gonna hurt. Ooh, we're just going. Okay. Going first, yeah. first. So he will attack with the weapon. Uh, but now I'm thinking. Is he going for the patrons or is he going for just the armor smith? I would like to see the armor smith here. Yeah. Just to build up the armor and still have some minions on board just to deal the damage. Because now he's being baited that there was no removal yeah. in the hand. Yeah. And he goes for the patrons. Yeah. Which might end badly for him. And probably it will. All right, goes ahead and re-equips the Death Spite as well. Knows that usually there's not much room for weapon removal in Murloc Paladin. There's actually a lot of flex cards in Murloc Paladin, but I know a lot of people don't uh, like to run the weapon removal. And so uh, just being able to play that um, right off the bat saves him four mana next turn. So mm -hmm. that's correct. And he now hit his cap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Solemn Vigil is available for Chalk, which is up quite um, useful when you run Doomsayers, but already two Doomsayers were used in, that, uh, yeah. in this game. So no more interaction in your turn with the mm -hmm. uh, Doomsayer destruction ability. Yeah. Solemn Vigil by itself is not that great of value. Two cards for five mana. Uh, definitely mm. not what you want to be doing. But he Overpaid he by two, basically. Yeah. He, he can clear the board here. Um, uh, but again, you know... It he doesn't have the second equality, so that can always feel bad. But I, d I don't think you can risk leaving this board of patrons up. No, you can't. You're going to take that extra damage. You know that your opponent has a weapon equipped. So even just on the board, that was 12 damage coming out of his face next turn. Cannot afford to have that happen. Unfortunately, he will kill his own Pyromancer if he wants to play the Sun Vigil. But he, went, he, he goes for the Sludge Box instead, which is Ooh. a great... Great turn for him because he now he stops the attack from the death, um, some of the death spite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit of an interesting choice to you know not play the solemn vigil, but keeping that wall permanents are alive, it could trade up, mm -hmm. you know, into something. Yeah. Yep. Either or a patron. just pre pressure your opponent. Sure. You know? Yeah. He's had uh, two bluegill warriors die and one um, war leader. I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so that that's basically four damage, <laughs> eight damage. <right? laughs> eight damage burst for wow. ten mana. Look Not at that. Bad. Yeah. Not bad. Eight damage for ten mana. Strictly worse pyroblast. <laughs> that can't go through taunts or lotheb. Wow. Yeah. It's starting to look worse and worse the more I talk about. Well, it. you know, pyroblast can't go through lotheb as well. So maybe 
not that bad, but yeah, you're you're correct. Yeah. The word strictly was used in a correct sentence as well. Yeah. I make sure that whenever I say <laughs> the word strictly, I use it correctly. Second battle rage this time for three cards instead of two as last time, which is still a good deal. Two yeah. mana for two cards. Yeah. Sure, why not? Let's see here. Peacekeeper. Mm, that's not what I what you wanted to see. So solemn vigil. Yeah. Uh, you gotta. F yeah. Well, you know that both patrons have been used after this, so you just need to find a way to uh, clear this board. But you know, consecrate doesn't do anything because consecrate will create another patron, mm -hmm. and then it will you know hit the uh, unstable ghoul. So then it'll create another one. But I think at the end of it all, there will still only be there'll be two patrons left. One with two health and one with three health. Yeah, well, what he wants to achieve here is that he just wants to play Solemn Vigil for two mana instead. Yeah. I guess. He can actually... <laughs> he can play the second Consecration <laughs> for zero, <laughs> yes. But but at the same time, you need yeah. to keep it for the equality, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we'll see what Chalk is going to pick up. Ooh. Old Murkai allows him to address the two health patron, but... There's a Despite equipped with one durability remaining and another patron on the board, so uh, going into dangerous territory. Definitely. Chalk is at the moment. Well, one damage to the face, always something. Yep. Adds up to the two from the Consecration. Yep. Uh, but still not a good, good situation for Chalk. Yeah. You can see that's the uh, player area here at the Bunk Hostel. We have uh, matches going on. Uh, simultaneously from the one you're currently seeing on stream. Keep in mind, there's 64 players remaining still left in the tournament. And got to get through those in two days. So pretty cool. It's a pretty cool area. True. Hmm. I'm thinking about this turn. You can actually go just Gromish and aggressively pressure your opponent. Sure, yeah. But it seems like the uh, Frothing Berserker and Ali Stasika might be just more tempting. Yeah. You could even just, uh, now that he's seen one Consecrate, one Wild Pyromancer, one Equality, he can go all in with the Patrons. But there's so many options here. Uh, I like the Grom play just because you're getting the damage in now. You know, outside of an Inner Rage or maybe a cool Taskmaster if he runs it, it's never going to be more than 10 damage to the face. You force your opponent to not only heal, but also clear the board, which is, you know, uh, has a lot of inherent value. Uh, but just go with the Frothing Berserker, which also is a big threat. Well, he went with the attack for the, from the death side, which, which kind of surprised me because I was sure that if he's using the whirlwind, then he saves the weapon for yeah. the next turn. But he went for, the, for it instantly, so he wants just to make, yeah. you know, a huge board. But it's a problem if your opponent has a second consecration because you have your board filled yeah. now. Maybe he was trying to play around anything can happen by making more armor. But there's still one boy leader that hasn't been played, if I remember correctly. Yes. So that's four attack from each bluegill, yeah. and there are two played, and one old Murkai. And the Murkai will have four plus four, four plus three, basically. So seven. Yeah. That's 15 damage. That's yeah. He was already at 18. Not enough. Yeah. Maybe he was afraid of back to back, so he wanted to not only gain, gain armor, but also play the Frothing Berserker. But Still, the, the line of play seems a little bit weird, but, you know, um, uh, it's still good. It still puts a lot of pressure on the board, and that's a big thing against the Murloc Paladin, is forcing them to use those board clears. Furling Berserker dies, unfortunately, to the second Consecration because it was set up on two health after the big, big swing turns mm -hmm. from Shiny Pants. So, unfortunately, zero damage being dealt from the Furling Berserker, which yeah. had like, potential to just finish up the game on yeah. its own. But, you know, I, there's, I don't think there's any way for Chalk to survive this. Even if he uses Eldor Peacekeeper on one of these creatures, Grom plus Slam in the hand would, would make 16 damage just with two mm -hmm. three attack mm -hmm. creatures on board. Mm -hmm. So it looks like despite Chalk's best efforts, he is going to fall to the damage of the Grom Hellscream. Ooh, the well played. He's Always he, like that. He had to have seen it coming, though, you know? Yep. Yeah. Slam on Grom, 10 damage to the face, and two patrons attack. We'll finish off the game. We'll see if... No, no allies attack. So, exactly full dealt for three minions. Enough of pressure for, for Shiny Pants to go through uh, the, whole, um, the whole game. Yep. And he now he's on the lead. 1-0 against Chalk. That is correct. And, and going into 
I want to call it an unfavorable matchup. I think it's close just because of the reasons that you mentioned earlier. Sometimes you can just tempo your opponent out of the game uh -huh. and apply pressure. Um, Chalk, I think, made some good good decisions with you know holding on to his removal as long as he could, uh, realizing that clearing boards full of patrons is is how you is how you navigate that matchup. But you can see the Warrior win for Shiny Pants has Warlock and Paladin uh, left remaining. And judging by the Patron Warrior choice and the Druid choice as his fourth deck. It seems like Shiny Pants is just going with the strategy of bringing the strongest decks in the format. And so I imagine Zoo Warlock, Secret Paladin. Might be a good call, yeah. I would say. Uh, by the way, we didn't mention that we were playing Conquest. Oh, yeah. So, you know, there were so many events currently with yeah. last year's standing. Mm -hmm. So it looked like the new, the new, the new old way of playing. Yeah. Uh, but here we are using Conquest, so... But with the ban format, so yeah. that's at least cool. The same as the Hearthstone Championship Tour, so... Uh, for a quick rundown, if you're unfamiliar with it, in order to win the series, you must win one game with all three of your decks yes. uh, that are remaining after the ban phase. So it looks like we're going to jump into game number two, Paladin versus Paladin, and it looks like it is going to be a secret Paladin for Shiny Pants. Mm -hmm. Which is a good matchup for the Mortal Paladin, actually, mm -hmm. when you think about it. There's a lot of ways to shut down uh, secret Paladin out of having you know a big threat after the swing turns yeah. with the mysterious challenger because you have equality pyromancer equality uh, consecration the early doomsayers will stop the bleeding from the minions that will are on the board which is really easy to calculate when you're playing against the paladin yeah. right because you know that they what they can have is a call hammer a consecration maybe a truce of a champion and most of the paladins are playing only one yeah. nowadays or maybe not, not even one so you can easily just drop the doomsayer without you know, being mm, intimidated by the fact that your opponent can clean it up. Yeah. You can always calculate for the worst case scenario yeah. against Secret Paladin. Exactly. Which, which is something that should always be uh, taken into account when discussing this matchup. Because uh, Secret Paladin's all about building up that sort of insurmountable board and just pressing you out of the game with it. And as you mentioned, Raw Paladin does great against those types of decks. So. You know, this gives away a lot when you use the coin before you actually have made your decision of what yeah. you drop to play. Definitely gives a lot, of, uh, a lot of information for um, for Chalk here because now he's aware that there's at least two drops. Yeah. When it comes to two mana drops, because he was thinking about which one to choose, and it's not an easy decision. Actually, each of those had some merit. Mm -hmm. um, Knife Juggler is great against hero powers. It's great against um, basically everything that that's in the. Murloc Paladin deck. The only thing that it would be countered by would be the Bluegill uh, Warrior. Yes. So that's that's what he was worried about there, it seems. And the Doomsayer, because you have no way of dealing the uh, 7 damage to it. One yeah. turn two. Yeah. So double shield and mini bot, you know, sort of the, the dream curve here. But the Doomsayer will just wreck dreams, because now even, the, even with the Cog Hammer, you can't deal 7 damage. Yep. There's no way. So you lose two mini boss to a single Doomsayer, which is an amazing um, payoff, I would say, for 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 Chalk here. You give complete initiative over to that Murloc Paladin. If only he were a top deck, a Solemn Vigil next turn, so he can draw mm. um, he, he can draw two cards from the Solemn Vigil for one mana. Yeah, and then still have three mana remaining uh, for the whole turn, so he can just you know hero power. You can play. Another Doomsayer if you'll draw it, yep. if you want to just preserve some life points and some plays from your, your opponent on turn 4. Which is nice, I would say, because mo I, I, I said before, most of the Secret Paladins are dropping to Silver Champions in favor uh, for more Cog Hammers. Yeah. So you don't have a really powerful turn 4 that isn't a minion. Mm -hmm. I think the big question here for Shiny Pants is whether or not he wants to play either the Cog Hammer or the Haunted Creeper, and does decide to play the Haunted Creeper, so this guarantees that uh, Shiny Pants is going to have at least something on the board going into the next turn. Hmm. What do you think is fine? Yeah. Unfortunately, no Solemn Vigil for that ultimate synergy. Yeah, that would be zero mana, actually. Because yeah. one minion was played yeah. uh, from Shiny Pants, so there were five minions on board. Avenge. Hmm. Well, it was only a matter of time before he picked up a secret. Uh, he he was almost in a shiny pants is almost in a scenario where he had not an ideal start for secret paladin, but one where he didn't draw any of his secrets early, which is exactly what you want because that mm -hmm, means mm -hmm. 
If you do draw a Mysterious Challenger, it means that you're pulling, you know, the quote-unquote bad cards out of your deck to make a room, more room in your hand and, and less room in your deck for the big threats like Tyrion, Dr. Boom, the second Mysterious Challenger. True. I was, I was thinking about... Oh, <laughs> one turn to light. It's the next card. Oh, no. I was thinking about using maybe the second um, Spectre Spider <laughs> just to have the Divine Shield still on board. Okay. Which would be better against, let's say, a True Silver Champion. Yeah. But then it makes less... Uh, it gives you less impact on the advantage uh, on board, right? Yeah. I mean, you can bluff with the, with the secret in that position yeah. as well, right? He could have just played the Pile of Shredder, you know, on, on four mana and kept the Divine Shielded Spectral Spider, which I think would have been pretty decent. Well, yeah, I, I like that line of play. Last turn. He had to play the Cold Hammer last turn. Oh, okay. No, then forget, forget everything that I said. No worries. Thought he had four mana remaining. Hmm. Competitive spirit. No mysterious challenge of turn six, which is not that bad actually, because there's pyromancer quality. Yeah. On the uh, uh, other side of the board. I mean, other side of the hand. I would say. Yeah. You, you don't even need at that stage pyromancer quality. You could even just pyromancer solemn vigil mm. to clear a board full of one ones. Hmm. That's not an easy turn. You. You want to get most value out of this turn, right? Because yeah, the massive battle is really tempting with the knife dragger, but you didn't see a single clear yet yeah. uh, from Chalk apart from the Doomsayers. So yeah. no Dooms, uh, no pyromancers yet to be seen. No equality. Sorry, no consecrations yet to be seen. Yeah, it's so quite a difficult decision to make, and I like what he did. Yeah. Especially with the um, <laughs> smaller Pile of Shredder in, in the middle, because it's most likely to die, um, you know, in the next upcoming turn. So if he dies, then he might buff the minions on the left and the right side. I know the Doomsayer is being brought to the table. You know that this is not competitive spirit, because the, uh, the Pile of Shredder was not buffed. So it might be... Noble sacrifice, it might be avenge, it might be redemption, but probably yep. redemption wouldn't have been played into a into a board with two one ones. So he so crush this off. He he does play the doomsayer because right on the board there's actually no way to deal with. Since you, as you mentioned, he knows that it isn't competitive spirit. Yep. Uh, just the, from the board alone, he knows that the doomsayer won't die. But we can see knife juggler plus muster for battle. Will. Most likely deal with the well. Most of a battle might be enough as well, right? You don't want to overcommit. And I would say you're al already overcommitting yeah. with a massive battle, so it's either you just go yeah. full, I I like you know, all in yeah. with every single card, or you just go for for oh yeah, Master's Challenger and your power. Yeah. Just the weapon. Yeah, just the weapon will deal with it. So yeah, that's a good point. Justice. Not overextending into a board clear is definitely something that can make this matchup a little better. I like the competitive spirit here. If your opponent doesn't clear the board, then you get additional 7 attack hmm. for 1 mana investment. If your opponent clears the board, like completely, then you still have 2 death rattles. If he clears only the 1-1s, one -ones, you have uh, Avenge popping out and then competitive spirit with plus 2 attack, which yeah. is still cool. Yeah. So, could be a big deal regardless. And does have the Wild Pyromancer Equality. You know, Wild Pyromancer Equality plus Old Murkai uh, could be enough removal to get rid of everything but one hmm. of the creatures, because it's going to have two come out from the Pilot and Shredder. Oh, uh, but see. no, the Taunt is going to block it. That's interesting. Yeah. And it's a bigger Taunt. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh well, it's not that relevant, right? Yes. Yeah. Probably will die from 30 anyway. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Wait, actually, it's a 1 4. Yeah, I forgot about the competitive spirit. Now it's it's relevant. It's gonna d get in for that one damage every single turn. Yes, it is raining. Not Singapore. only it's humid and hot, but it's also raining. Yeah, perfect weather. Yeah, the perfect weather. 
See, uh, it's a little bit of a reprieve though, because it's it's cooled down a tiny bit here. Um, after the the rain has come down now, so. All right. Well, three secrets pulled from the mysterious challenger. Uh, pretty normal, probably noble sacrifice, uh, the second avenge, and a redemption. A lot of times, like yeah. there's one, usually one redemption and one competitive spirit. If I'm correct. Four health being healed, uh, for shine pains right now, which is awesome for <laughs> for the investment that he made, which is zero mana. Yeah, zero. <laughs> That is true. Well, the Shredder's a great card. And uh, Keeper of Voldemont picked up as well. So Chalk, now he, he's under quite a bit of pressure. Mm. Uh, so he's going to lay on hands this turn. Uh, he realizes that, you know, doesn't have a way to remove the board, so he's got to try and dig. But he's going to take so much damage. 13, 16, 17 damage represented wow. on the board. And the blessing of kings as well. Wait, th that's six damage from, from the hand. Yeah. Twelve, twenty, twenty-three, twenty-five, twenty-six. Right? Am I correct? Three, four. Then we have ten, seventeen, eighteen, twenty-two, twenty-four. Four, damage. Twenty-four damage. Yeah. Do you just go for it? I mean, your your opponent's oh. already used inequality, so they've already used you know one of the ways that they can clear the board. And, but they just drew three cards with the lay on hand. So can you risk it? He's been through probably uh, uh, half his deck or a little more than half his deck so far. That's that's chalk. So oh, looks like he is going to hold back on at least one of these things. Yeah, I agree with him. Actually, to not of extent. Yeah, with the juggles, you were right the first time. It was 26 damage because he could juggle from, oh no, 25. 25. Yeah, because he could juggle from the keeper only to get nine mana. Well, he still plays the uh, Blessing of Kings. All right. Okay, now I'm interested. Bold call. But we can see that Chalk doesn't have a way to deal with this. He doesn't have the equality. Top deck or not. And Bluegill Warrior and Old Murkai is not enough to make a dent through this. But it's two Bluegill Warriors and an Old Murkai. That would only buff it to four attacks. So it wouldn't even get through the... <laughs> The 7-5 sparring partner. Well, there's the Pyromancer, right? So you can play Pyromancer, Equality, uh, sorry, Pyromancer, uh, Consecration, deal free damage to each creature, and then two Blue Bill Warriors. Oh, and Solemn Vigil as well. Yep. Because the Blue Bill Warriors will die. So uh, this is a little bit dangerous. Oh! Yeah. Well, it didn't matter that much because it will die anyway. Yeah. But um, this adds some options. Solemn Vigil now. He's got to find the consecr or the sorry the equality for the wild pyromancer but he doesn't find it and shiny pants has already has his emote ready well i'm quite interested because why would you not play can you queue it up pyromancer into uh, solemn vigil no because then pyromancer dies to the second spell yeah also avenge it. would proc as well on one of the creatures since one of the the smaller creatures would die first so mm -hmm. i don't think there was any way that chalk chalk survived that turn i think he found the only way that he could have Mm -hmm. And that was, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get the only out, which was going to be that equality. second equality. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. That was probably not out. Yeah. Well, happens. It happens. To our deficit with the Murloc Paladin, which is not encouraging at all, because you have to win with this deck still. Yeah. Because this, it's the Conquest format. But for Shiny Pants, only Warlock is remaining now. And the Warlock is the zoo. So your prediction wa was correct. Yeah, and, uh, you know, just playing the strongest decks can sometimes be a good strategy, I've heard. And Sounds good. Actually, Chalk is also uh, bringing the Zoo Warlock, so the other prediction was not correct. Um, actually, no. This could still be... The Malagos? No. It could still be Reno. Reno, yeah, well, we with didn't the see combo. Any, we didn't see any doubles yet. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think we've seen him mulligan away something yet. So I'm leaning towards Zoo because that'd be more likely given the, the four cards that we see. But still could be Arena Warlock is all of those cards w uh, would be running that deck. It would make more sense with his lineup. And it would also make more sense with his Druid ban if that were the case. But some players just don't like playing against Druid. It's just how it is. Even if you're going into a matchup which is considered to be relatively favored with the Zoo Warlock against the Druid. Yeah, you can still... Druids can still just do Druid things. Well, if they draw Innovate, have a Keeper, maybe double swipes. 
That's an easy ma easy match for Druid then. That is yes, that is correct. Flame Imp, turn one. One of the best plays against another warlocks because usually they don't they don't have a way to deal with it. For at least I would say two turns of attack. Yeah. Just six damage for one mana investment. Seems good. Alright, well Dark Peddler still doesn't tell us anything. Yep. Uh, maybe I missed them all again. Uh, but I, d I don't think I well, saw I didn't them all again away anything else. Yeah, I yeah. didn't see it as well. So. Hey, Voidwalker's being picked up. Yeah. Well, that means that Shiny Pants has to play his own Voidwalker because he doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to give away his Flame Imp as well. Yeah. The problem is... If there's a mortal coil, because if there's a mortal coil, you will still give out your flame to that the dark peddler as well, uh, so with the void walker alongside it. So you, it's two for one basically. Yeah. Uh, but I think the damage might be more important. You're still not sure what kind of warlock you're facing. I mean, from shiny pants' perspective. So if you know, I if you assume that this might be another aggressive zoo, then the damage might be more important than the value right yeah. now. Uh, is the coin? Does the coin tell you anything though? Because uh, would Arena Warlock coin out a Dark Petal in that situation? Well, that means he probably didn't have anything just to play, yeah. right? Because it was like, in the, first of all, um, he could have made some assumption of what was being kept in the hand by seeing the Mulligan, and then he saw the Peddler being ripped off the top from the deck, right? Yeah. So if, if that was coined out, that means there was no better to drop or one drop in the hand yeah. already, right? So y you might make uh, make some assumptions based on that. That's a tricky situation. They want to silence this and then trade for the flame, but then you leave your owl to die f for the one free, and you don't have a mortal coil to deal with that. So probably not. <laughs> it's awkward no matter what you do. Yeah. Uh, you just want to try and buy time for that turn three M gang boss, because that's that's going to allow you to. More efficiently trade back onto the board. Yeah, the problem is, if you play the Void Walker, it just dies to the Flame Imp. So if you play Void Walker, you can't attack. So you skip the attack with the with the Dark Battle just not to to uh, set up your Peddler on one HP, because then it dies to the Void Walker as well, like um, you know, just a blowback. <laughs> the blowback. Yeah. It's not an easy turn, but I, I I think that's the correct one to just play and pass. Oh, he's not passing; he's attacking. Okay. Well, you know this isn't the worst in the world because this means that the dark peddler, you know, will end up trading for the for the void walker, which he had to get through at some point anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it still depends what kind of warlock he plays. We don't know. There's the defender of Argus, but that's still my okay. No okay. Right. Now we know. No, it's Reno Warlock with a Sea Giant. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's some next level stuff, man. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, I'm an engineer. Yeah. Yep, it's wood. <laughs> it's wood. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Tap Die Wolf Alpha doesn't seem to be bad. Yeah. Allows a, a really clean trade here. Um. And you still build up that Die Wolf Alpha value because you trade with the 1-1 one -one and your 1-1 one -one becomes 2-1. Yeah. So it is actually like a full blown one mana minion. Yeah. Until the moment that the wolf um, ceases to exist. Yeah. But that's not, there's no implosion yet, and your opponent that probably doesn't want to play the implosion into an imp gang boss. Yeah. So it looks good for shiny pants. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's really looking good for shiny pants. He did tap last, to be fair. But there was no difference when but he already yeah. wanted to play the direwolf. There was no better outcome. He right? could have picked up a second direwolf alpha, acted like he played it off the top for psychological warfare, <laughs> or also to you know bluff to chalk that he doesn't have any other better plays. So okay, there's there's true. there's some things. There's always something that goes into tap first. Now this is a really far fetched move, but you have no other options. You have to play yeah. the nav juggle, silence the. Now that. The you have two targets to silence. It's either the in-game boss or the Die Wolf Alpha. So if you want to go, you know, with the far-fetched route and just kill off the two-one with the juggle, then the proper silence is on the in-game boss. But if you don't plan to do that, yeah. then it's better to silence the dark. Uh, sorry, the the um, the wolf, the dark uh, Die Wolf. Yeah. Well, this seems like a good implosion. I think so. Yeah. Or do you want to just to build the second imp, imp gang boss and an urban egg? It's not bad either. When you have two implosions. 
You know what? This just feels like any play is going to be pretty good. And in Zoo versus Zoo, as soon as you wrestle control of the board, unless your opponent has the weird, you know, tech of a Hellfire or a Shadow Flame, which is very oh hey wave to the hand hey guys w wave to the hand yeah, which is very rare in Zoo Warlock, very very rare. I'd probably say less than one percent of Zoo Warlocks run Shadow Flame or Hellfire. That was a um, case like one year ago. Maybe yeah. one and a half year ago, something yeah. like that. Yeah. But nowadays, yeah, no one runs that. The only, um, the only thing that you can think about the implosion, and instead to go, uh, like to change your mind into going um, for the route with two minions from your hand, is the fact that you play around Sea Giant. Yeah. Right, because your opponent will have a six mana Sea Giant instead. Um, because like, as you can see, you just enabled the Sea Giant. But the problem is, what does that Sea Giant do? Not really that much, unless it gets taunted, right? Yeah. It just trades for one minion. If you go phase, you can't really, you can't really raise your opponent right now yeah. because he will just have more minions, more uh, ways of clearing the board, and just raise you as well at the same time. Yeah. So both these players running two very different variations of the Zoo Warlock. Uh, Chalk's running uh, the Sea Giant version, which originated from. Chinese scene uh, from a player called I'm Duke. not surprised. Right, <laughs> yeah. From a player called Duke uh, who ran Enhanced Mechano with Sea Giants and a Leroy Jenkins. And uh, this sort of throughout the winter championships across all three regions, a lot of the players adapted it, you know, took out the Handsome Mechano, but still kept the core of the Sea Giants and the Leroy Jenkins as opposed to Doom Guard. Uh, and then Shiny Pants, of course, is running the Doom Guard version, which uh, has better matchups against Druid because Doom Guard fights for the board better than something like a Leroy Jenkins. And a lot mm -hmm. of times, Sea mm -hmm. Giant is mm -hmm. hard to play for cheap mana against uh, Druid. Harder to play uh, for cheap mana. So, uh, two very different styles. See some other players duking it out there in the player area. But I see almost the same situation. So, Implosion on one side yeah. and some uh, Nurbin Egg. Yeah, and probably a Druid rolls. on the other side, maybe. <laughs> If I had to take a guess. Now for Chalk, another harsh turn. Wow, this is not looking good. Yeah, but the the board isn't too threatening from Shiny Pants. It is only... Only five? Only, it, only it's five. Actually, uh, it's actually five, you know? Yeah. Five is a lot. It's one-sixth of your health well, total. You, you, can take, uh, you could have taken off the at least one, or Ooh. just one, with the implosion. Wow! He actually plays in Cancel Mechano. Oh my god, he has the brand in the Cancel Mechano. I just figured that out. So there's, like, no, no. there's no lethal potential here, but there's a potential for a big swing. Uh, okay. Wait, what? No Wind Furies. Is that... Uh, how is that even possible? What, no Wind Furies with two Battle Cries of Enhance Mechano? On six minions. On six minions. And he got twice taunt on one of the imps. Yeah. Not even the egg got Wind Fury. Wow. That's 12 chances to get one Wind Fury. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, uh, that's kind of uh, not satisfying at all. <laughs> but at the same time, he is in such a good position right now. I mean, the, the Ruben Egg with the Divine Shield is not the best. Yeah. And it didn't get taunt. <laughs> I mean, it got... Okay, so... When you when you rewind this, right? He got twice divine shield on the Rubin egg, twice divine shield on the imp gang boss, twice taunt on one of the imps, and the other two imps got taunt and divine shield, and then the brand bronze beard got twice divine shield. He got three times, sorry, four times, double the same result. Yeah. What are the odds of that? But it's still a board that's very threatening and very hard to deal with. Because Bran is still there. So if there's something like an Abusive Sergeant in the hand, mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden that becomes four damage. Ooh, Defender of Argus. Defender of Argus. Whoa. All of a sudden becomes plus two, plus two. And you you can put the taunt on the egg as well. So oh it's a two, my. four egg. You kind of... I would like that, actually. If you yeah. put the Defender of Argus on the imp gang boss and the egg, you push for... Six eight damage this turn, and you have a Doom Guard for next turn, and your minions will probably survive this anyway. Even if he goes through the taunts, every single taunt, there's still a four four minion remaining from the egg, and 
uh, you know, just finish off the opponent with Doomguard next turn. Yeah. It's incredibly tough to deal with this boy. I, I don't think there's a way that Chalk, you know, <laughs> finds his footing in this matchup and mounts a comeback. This, this board is just too strong. Wow. 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 Nothing he can do. He could Defender of Argus, his Defender of Argus. Uh, that's not a good play. Shadow Flame? No. Well, Shadow Flame would still not be enough. <laughs> well, you have Pio. Never mind. Yeah. That's it. That that will be the end of the game. Yep. And will it be? Yeah. It will, right? Yes. Yeah, he's, he's going to have enough... Well, he... he sh yeah, with the Doom Guard, he, he'll... He'll de well, did he doesn't have room on the board. He has to sacrifice some of these minions easily. I think all he has to do is put the imps in. So sacrifice two imps. You have four, six, eight. That's 13 damage on the lethal. Oh. Could have he done this different thing though? I don't think so. No, he was going to be one off regardless. And turn? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not the button you want to press. Uh, he could tap for an abusive sergeant. Uh, he could also tap for a power overwhelming. I would definitely tap. After you play, of course, the Doomguard. Yeah. If he if he picks up an abusive sergeant with this tap, there's justice in the world after all. He's not going to even let us know. Yeah. No, he will. Oh, okay. Okay, never mind. Never punished. But there's absolutely no way Chalk comes back in this yeah, one. Yeah, how, can can how <laughs> can you come back from this? Yeah, you can see a cheeky smile comes across his face, and he is going to tap out literally of the match and of the series. And that's Shiny Pants taking it 3-0. to zero. A quick 3-0, and yep. he advances to the top 16, winner's bracket. Yeah. Right? So yep. that's... Um, he has that going for him. Still a lot of matches to be played for uh, for shiny pants at the same time chalk is not eliminated yet yeah he is now knocked down to the losers bracket so he will have to win more matches to get back yeah you know he has to just go to the finals of the losers bracket and he'll be back into the grand final uh, but it's a long road yeah. a really long road but still possible and chalk uh, of course we talked about he's on fade to karma uh, he's one of their international players also uh, one of the sort of the star players of the mm -hmm. Philippines so Definitely a tough road, but not one that's undoable for him. And, uh, of course, Shiny Pants, uh, definitely an, an impressive, you know, performance there. Just picking decks that are strong and really sticking it to Chalk's Murloc Paladin. Yeah, the Murloc Paladin didn't do well uh, in those matchups, even though he had a good thing, good thing going. Uh, mm. And I wanted to say that he probably was slightly favored. Yeah. Uh, but the draws weren't so nice to him, so... Yeah. Good decisions from both players overall. Yeah. And some funny, funny situations with the Encanso, uh, Encanso Meccano that got double four results yeah. with the brand, so... Uh, a little bit weird. A little bit yeah. weird. Really interesting match. But yeah. Shiny Pants advance 3-0 with solid performance. Yeah. And uh, so uh, keep in mind, we still have... Uh, there's 64 players remaining in the tournament uh, once again. And uh, we just saw a, a match from the round of 32 winners bracket. So we'll be continuing on with that. But uh, I believe we are going to go to a quick break before we jump into the second winners round uh, match of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Shaking some salt onto Chalk's face. Yeah, we'll have some jokes for that <laughs> later on. All <laughs> right. All right. Well, we are going to go to a quick break but guys do not go anywhere because more singapore major hearthstone action will continue right after this <laughs> 